Hi, I'm Mark, and in this episode, the first episode in a series of videos of Overlanding Quick Tips. Today, we're going to take a look at 10 quick tips for a rooftop tent. Let's get started. Okay, this should be obvious. In heavy winds, you can really help the fluttering and the bouncing around of the tent, especially the rain fly. If it's not going to rain or just rail rain lightly, then remove the fly. It really makes a difference and you can see mine's off for a reason. Uh, this is the fourth day in the Kofa Wildlife Reserve and we had some heavy, heavy winds, about 40 miles per hour on a couple nights with gusts even higher and there seems to be spurts of heavy gusting. It's pretty dry here so even if it rains a little bit, uh, the ARV tent that we have has really good rain characteristics all by itself. In a downpour, I'd put this back on, but since it's off, who knows what the weather's gonna do. I'll wait to see if we got rain coming. The next quick tip is roll the cover for your roof tent up. Uh, the Gobi roof rack has uh, some vertical uh, pipes as well as the horizontal, and that's where these connect to. We just with a bungee, and then I wrap them around over the top that way and that way, and I permanently leave the bungees sprung across. They really work pretty good that way. Um, it saves sliding it off and putting it back on. All you do is you just fold it over into the piece, roll it up when it's up, put it there, and there. It goes a little quicker with two, but if you've got one, it works fine. And open the door. Sometimes bigger tents may have a little problem depending on your tent, your roof rack, and the cover. Uh, some of them are lighter material than others. Um, you can, some people will tuck them under, but normally that won't happen too often. The next tip is you need to get up on the roof when you're packing it up. You can sleep up there. It makes it easier if you climb around on top to you can bend down and do stuff like that that allows you to get at the tent and fold it up and tuck stuff in uh, from either side. Um, your roof rock and your tent can handle the weight. So as you can see, moving around in there does make it easier. Even if there's two people and it goes really fast, um, it allows you just to deal with issues really quickly, especially if your vehicle is just hugely muddy. <laughs> Having your belly rubbing up to it is, is not a fun thing to do and it's way easier to come from the top. That's your least muddy up place, place on the vehicle. So the next tip is don't hesitate to change your ladder if you're having trouble with it. Uh, we had trouble from the beginning on our two piece sliding ladder that oh, so many of these tents come with. Wait till a little sand and dry dust gets in there and you're trying to slide it up and get those pinholes to line up, you pull it down and all of a sudden it slides out because you didn't have them pinned right. The compression ladders are really suited for this because they handle the depth really well. Those fixed ladders only go so far then you need this other goofy little piece which is hard to store. So don't be afraid to change the ladder. Uh, if I can remember which one this is, uh, we modified it, we added Actually, we didn't modify it, we just added it to. I'll put the, it in the description if I can remember which one and I still have it. I'm pretty sure I got this one on Amazon, so they should have it there. Um, but it works really well. It fits under the tent just the same way. Uh, and I can adjust the height. You can see I got quite a bit more space. Uh, lifting the Jeep also caused some issues, but I used basically the same hardware. Uh, this was a bit narrower. So I had to drill a couple new holes that go up into the tent, but they went through anyway, so it wasn't really a problem. I used all the same, this is all the tent hardware. I think I ground off the pointy piece and just sort of used a uh, grinder and just rounded it off. I think I cut it first and then did it. I just made a round circle here. Uh, these bolts, I, I, dr I used what's called a drill end tap, which is a, a, a drill bit with threads on the other side. I think I went with quarter inch uh, standard nuts and I just drilled the hole through and then what I did was it just keeps going and then it'll tap it through. Uh, a, a drill and tap is a really useful 
uh, piece for this and with the aluminum it's no problem at all. So put some stainless steel hardware in, we're laughing. It works really well. Everything works infinitely better than what it comes with. Okay, the next tip is when you have the type of tent that has this over, over space here from the tent where it normally is here, some tents have this extra coverage area that covers the ladder for the most part or drops water on your back as you're coming down, depend on which it is. Um, anyway, it is nice to have this vestibule. And the problem is, if you've got any kind of dew happening on, the moisture rises and they do, it does kind of co uh, collect up here underneath. But the worst part is, is that if this flap is open uh, on the entrance door, what happens is the moisture just keeps going up the tent and it rises up into the tent on the ceiling. You can control, you can control the dew in the tent much better if you close the flap every night. Um, it's nice to have the cross uh, ventilation. You can do that with both windows, but I recommend both ends, especially if you've got the fly that sticks out, you've got to watch that the dew will foam or not foam, but follow this roof up and get in. So this tip is to put that flap down. It really helps. Okay, this next tip is wet the tent down once in a while with a garden hose. Uh, when we bought the tent, uh, it, in the instructions before the first use was to do exactly that. Take the rain, rain fly off and spray the tent with water and soak it down. What that does with these heavy canvas tents where it really makes a difference is not only does it show any leaks, but it helps the stitching in the canvas soak up and seal up properly. There is um, uh, water tape on the seams and stuff, but nonetheless, sometimes there's, there's the, the canvas itself has stitching, right? And it just makes it easier for it to seal up with moisture. Uh, I do mine about once a year, depending if we're heading into some heavy rain, I might do it more than that. Uh, it helps clean all the dust and dirt off as well. Just take the fly off and hose it down, let it dry out, fold it up. Works good. The next tip is commonly used items or important things to have in the tent. Uh, keep up there and don't bring them down because when you need them, they likely won't be there. Uh, here's kind of the things we've got up there. That's the lantern we use up there. It's always up there. We don't bring it down unless we absolutely have to. There'll be descriptions in the bottom for a couple of these things so you can take a look at them. Uh, bear spray, of course, it's uh, one of the reasons we have the rooftop tent and uh, we keep it on the back of the t vehicle, which would be above the trasher roof. Likely that's where the bear's going to go. Uh, there'll be smells there potentially. We won't all, we'll put that in a tree if we're really worried, but uh, if we're in serious bear country, but we'll keep it there. Likely that's where we're going to fight it from. He's not likely coming up the hood and on top the other side. It's easy to pass it around. The red bag usually holds bear um, bangers, which uh, produce a loud bang in the air. It's kind of like a pen gun that shoots them off. Sometimes they use flares in the same way, but we can uh, bring them across the border into the United States. We're Canadians and we're not allowed to bring them in. I'm not sure why that is, but anyway, and they allow the bear, bear spray. We also carry um, things that my wife uses, like uh, she likes to have some Motrin or something for a headache. Uh, she likes uh, Kleenex up there. And uh, we use just those little packages of those, keep one up there. She, carry, she gets usually dressed down and goes up and then gets dressed on the ground. I'm the opposite because likely I'm the guy getting up to deal with any thing that's flapping around or causing problems in the middle of the night and, uh, or fighting off something. So uh, I will get changed up there and I, I don't wear clothes, uh, you know, uh, go to bed in my clothes. I like to change, uh, but I'm not going <laughs> to run around butt naked. So I carry cotton items I've learned over time, uh, my experience in mountaineering and so on, and is you, you want to have some cotton items on you when you're sleeping uh, that, so that uh, there's a place for the um, moisture to absorb. Usually what I wear is a cotton t-shirt and uh, flannel cotton pants 
and uh, so I've got something to run around in in the middle of the night. I also there's that black uh, fleece pullover from North Face. I, I like those a lot and I, I usually have one of those up there if it's a colder night or um, you know I need a little bit extra to keep me warm for whatever reason. The tip here is keep the stuff up there you're going to use. Put it back there if you've got it down. The next tip is to make your own sleeping pad out of an, a sleeping bag, an old sleeping bag or something like that. Uh, it really helps with the warmth and comfort. It starts to soften up the mattress uh, if it is a bit firm for you. There are several things you can do. This is one of the things. It's like having a really soft uh, blanket underneath you. We made this one out of a sleeping bag. This would be the outside normally. Now it's the inside. And what we did was we just sewed an elastic band around like a mattress pad would be uh, and a little bit of um, cotton material. That's all we did and we just sewed it, cut the sleeping bag apart and sewed it up so that it would fit, cut it, put the elastic around and so on. The elastic can't go around the stays for your mattress but it just kind of hops over and works really good. So, and it hides that and there's a buckle actually which would be underneath you normally. So, yeah, you have the choice of this nylon thing, which you can sweat on if you're sleeping on. So, but this is nice and comfy. The next tip is to use real bedding. You don't have to take it down all the time. It's far more roomy. Uh, it's warmer in many instances. And if you're traveling with a spouse, you know, you don't have two sleeping bags, which are bulky to store in the vehicle. Even up here, they can be bulky. So we use a down duvet that just simply has a cover on it. And then we carry an extra blanket here, which we don't always use. And of course, you can throw some of them away if, over the night if you don't really want that extra heat. But it can get cold. For example, it froze last night here, and I'm only about... 80 miles from Yuma a thing. There's fleece blankets, which would be really good with fur on one side or something like that. Just an extra blanket for the really cold nights. And of course, real pillows. And they're, they're flat ones. They're not really thick and heavy ones and they compress really well, as you can see, but they are real pillows. If I travel myself, I like a little bit, but I'm not a real big, thick pillow seeker, but I use them both. And of course, they're always up here anyway, so. To augment the pillows, if we want, if I'm with my wife, Nicole, we would use our inflatable pillows. Now, granted, these are tiny. I mean, you know, they're, they're barely a foot this way and it, 10 inches that way. So, um, but they inflate with air. Uh, they got stuff in them, but then they, they squish down to nothing. Uh, they're for backpackers, uh, deluxe backpackers. We carried both of them and what we do is these are the type of um, where they slip underneath so we inflate them to the necessary level here you just blow in and then you just push in and it lets the air out we roll them up squish the air out when we go to put them away but we can control how heavy we want our pillow it's really pretty nice because it fits in here we just tuck it under after we fill it up to the proper amount and we're good to go the last tip is if you find the mattress uncomfortable, you can add a memory foam, one inch memory foam, which I think we bought at Costco, and it was rolled up and we unrolled it and cut it to the size we wanted. It was basically the distance from the bend over point to the back, and we have, we just folded it in half. So we end up with a two inch extra pad under our backs and both of us end up just right around the bottom. You could put it all the way, but it doesn't hold as well. And uh, my advice would be to fold it in half and it's under your back. And again, we just set it underneath so that when it flips over, everything stays in place. And again, our mattress pad that we've made is probably one of the best things we've done for this tent. Okay, the next thing I think I know what you're thinking is, oh, I can't believe I can get that in my rooftop tent. Well, I'm not sure. It probably depends on the model a little bit, but I have an ARB. It's pretty standard Simpson 3. So 
uh, you'll be amazed at how this folds up. And um, remember, everything is soft and flexible between the down duvet and the pillows and everything, just and the memory foam all compresses really, really well. So let's, I'm going to show you how we put it together and pack it up. I just put push the duvet up into the corners a little bit, not all the way, and I kind of just push them over so they're just kind of squish it towards the center a bit so that it, there's a little bit of gap. The next, th next thing is I do exactly the same thing with the uh, extra blanket that we have up here. Next, I just set the pillows on top of that and I make sure that I keep a little bit of room around so that the poles can slide down. And I'm talking about these Lloyds because they're all going to fold over and they're going to go right there. The next thing I do is I set the clothes there if we're going to leave any up here and the coals would just go on top of them. That's all. Just spread them across. Nothing fancy. Next comes the two little inflatable pillows. Uh, they compress to nothing. I've got I just compressed the get let the air out. Next I put in the center there just bear spray, uh, the lantern and the bear bangers and anything else you might have that's on the side. Because this tent has pockets here. I'm sure other tents have something similar. There's four, one on each side, and that's what we do. So we just take everything out of those so they don't get caught in the pipes again or compress in any way that's weird or dump out. They usually do. Next, I fold over the, the loose blanket, and you'll notice that I do it um, so that it doesn't interfere with the folding motion, which is here. And you can see it's held back a bit so that it doesn't push out the mattress when it folds over. And of course last but not least is the duvet itself. And all I do is we fold it over on top keeping a small gap around the edge all the way in there on the front. And again ahead of the folding point just make sure that nothing goes beyond there or it'll just push the bulge out and make it harder. It's okay so you're thinking oh my god that's a foot high. No, it's not. See, it compresses right down without any pressure at all. When this tent folds over, there's free space in there, which is about the thickness of what I, this is compressed. You can see the big divot in there. It doesn't take much. It's just full of air. Down puffs up. So does the memory foam. The pillows haven't been compressed. So works really good this way. My wife Nicole and I have this kind of agreement where the last one out folds up the tent and all the stuff inside and getting it ready to fold over. And uh, whoever gets down the ladder first makes the coffee. So it kind of works out in a quick and efficient manner in the morning and gets off on the right foot getting out of camp. I hope you find this video interesting and uh, helpful in some way. And thanks again for watching. And please subscribe, it helps the channel very much if you haven't already. If you like the video, definitely hit the like button because that helps as well. Thanks a lot again for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.